Hey everyone and welcome to HRO Tech. In this video, we're going to be looking at the chapter 2 of um, the IGCC ICT um, test book. Okay, and now we're looking at input and output devices. Okay, now, um, now in this chapter, we're going to learn the following. We're going to learn about input devices, direct entry, we're going to learn about the output devices, so it's important for you to stick around. It's going to be in a series, and there's a need to just actually break it down so that you can just um, understand it as much as possible. Okay. Now, as the name suggests, right, these are invariably hardware devices. That simply means that they can be sent to the computer, okay, and many of those devices exist. We have the common, in fact, you know them from the get-go. You, you just, when you hear about input devices, you, you have an idea of them, okay? They are, they are not um, they are not a cake, right? They are, they are not abstract. You, you have an idea, okay? From your keyboard um, to your mouse, etc. you have an idea. So stick with me on this, okay? Trust me, it will be second nature. Now let's start with input devices and then their uses. And in this video, we've talked about what input devices are and what output devices are. So in this video, what we're doing is we're exploring each of those input devices so that whenever you see questions on them, you know what to do. Okay. So let's start with the most obvious. I know I know you're thinking maybe a mouse, but trust me, the first thing that comes to mind is keyboard, right? And it is by far the most common method used for data entry because we use it to send data to the computers. Okay, we have them in our computers, we have them in our tablets, we have them in our mobile phones, and all and uh, many other electronic um, items as well. Okay, now um, the keyboard is connected to the computer, and we have what we call a wireless keyboard, and we have what we call a wired keyboard now the one that is wired is connected to the use of your usb okay so you just probably plug your usb and then you have it as an external and then you can um, key in those data to your computer you can interact with them okay in the case of tablets and um, your mobile phones like you know we've talked about the smartphones and we've talked about the tablets and we've talked about the difference between them so if you don't know the difference between a smartphone and a tablet and a tablet Please check the chapter one of um, this um, video. This is a chapter two of the thousand. Check the chapter one. It's right there on my um, YouTube channel. You can just search for it and you're going to see that to know the difference between them. Trust me, it's very, very interesting. Okay. Now, uh, in the case of the tablets, the mobile device, the smartphones, right? Um, the keyboard is often virtual. Okay, um, yeah, they are virtual or what we call your touch screen. Okay, and which you're gonna see later in um, the course of this um, test book. Okay, so when the characters is on the keyboard is key in, it is converted into what we call a digital signal, which the computer can you know can interpret. Okay, um, yes, I'm not I'm not gonna dispute that, but it is kind of slow method for keying details okay and especially when you have so much work to do and yes it's, it will be prone to errors because by keying those details you're gonna uh, probably key in some wrong things but but apparently keyboard is still the easiest way to that anybody can use to just um enter text um numbers into the computer right but however the frequent use of it causes what we call the repetitive string injury okay and you're gonna see that in hmm, chapter five the last page in the test book chapter five i'm talking about repetitive strain injury okay in the hands and of course in the wrist as well then again the economic keyboard which is right here can help to overcome this problem okay and these have keys arranged differently and they are also designed to give more support right to the wrist and hands what you're doing a lot of typing okay now um in summary how can the computer recognize a letter press on the keyboard right there's that main brain or the circuit board at the base right inside of the screen okay so when h or or, or maybe l is pressed the, this complete a circuit as shown okay so this is something like for example now when we press l 
the CPU in the computer can then determine which key has been pressed, which is L. Okay, and then the computer refers to the index file to identify which character the key press represents. Okay, so you press the letter, which letter is this? And it recognizes, oh, okay, it's L, and of course, that is done. So, what can we use the keyboard for? Well, the keyboard is to input data into application softwares, we use it in typing commands, and so on. Advantages they are the fast entry of text into our documents, it's a well known method. It's easy for use for most people and yeah, it's easier to do verification checks, right? Uh, data is what entered. Disadvantages for not disputing this, it can be very slow compared to other data entry um, um, devices. And of course, it can be difficult to use. That's if you have, um, this has limited AMs or retrieves. Um, it's funny, but it's true. It's a disadvantage, right? And it's a fairly large device that can use up, you know, you know, a valuable desk space. We're talking about the keyboard, we're not talking about your laptop keyboard, we're talking about the external keyboard, the keyboard you have to get. You know, when you're having a desktop computer, you have a keyboard, that's what we're talking about, okay? And then under the input, we have numeric key parts, okay? Now, the numeric key parts are used to enter numbers only, that's what it does. To enter numbers only, you can use them in your ATMs, which is the auto auto automate automatic teller machines. That is where customers can key in and they you know this, you know they can key in their pins to enter the amount of money they want to enter, right? And you can also see it in point of sales, right? In a case where the barcode reader fails to read the barcodes, now the, you you know the number has to be keyed in manually by the operator. Okay, mobile users to allow. Um, to enter the phone numbers, right? For mobile phones, they allow for phone numbers to be keyed in, right? And of course, for the chip and PIN device, which we'll also see later in this chapter, um, where we are paying our credit cards, okay? The, the chip and PIN device, so you, you slot in your PIN, you slot, you slot in your chip, rather, and then you type in your PIN, okay? So it could be in the form of this, um, what you have as what we call your EFPOS, right? So the moment you slot in, right, you can slot in your, your you slot in your chip right here, which is your card. This is right here like a chip, right? The chip is right here, okay? The chip, okay, I think I should close it. The chip is right here, right? And you can slot it in, okay? You can actually slot it in, and then you can just type in your PIN, okay, when you're paying for that, okay? Um, fast entry of data into your spreadsheet so let's look at some advantages of it okay um let's look at um it is faster than the standard keyboard because it's easier to enter numbers okay and because they are small devices they are very easy to carry around but however in disadvantages um sometimes the keys are small so it's kind of difficult to impute and then again the order of numbers is not intuitive right uh, people don't really you know, people don't really like it, you know. Um, it's not really easy to um, to go about that, okay? So, um, yeah. Okay, let's, I think we have um, time for one more. Um, let's look at the pointing device. So we've looked at the keyboard, and then let's look at the pointing device right here in this video. Now, for the pointing device, okay, we have the mouse, okay? And now, pointing device is simply what you're using to point, right? So the mouse is kind of like an example of a pointing device, and not just mouse. But let's explore mouse. Now, if you're wondering how the mouse looks like, this is an example of how the mouse looks like, okay? Now, it's a, like I said, it's an example of a pointing device, and this is where the user is able to just, the user is able to just control um, the position um, of a pointer on the screen, right? By moving the mouse around. So by moving the mouse around, you are controlling the position of the pointer um, where it is in the screen. Now, there are usually two buttons. Now, let's look at this, the two buttons right here. 
okay and they have different functions so we have the left button which is used to select an item so you click on it to select an item and uh, also by you can click, double click on it so you, um we have the click to select and double click um to actually open that folder or um application then we have the right button which is used to bring up something like this right the drop down menu okay now many also have what we call a scroll button which helps us to speed the process of moving through a document so it's like a scroll bar right to scroll up and down up and down okay however we have uh, optical mouse right which is detected by the reflected light rather than what the position of the moving ball and of course we have cutless or wireless mouse okay so that simply means we have the wired mouse and we have the wireless mouse the, the cordless mouse works with what we call a usb um wireless receiver so you plug the wireless receiver into your laptop right and then you are able to use that wireless mouse okay and um the advantage of optical mouse it, it has no moving parts and it also does not pick up any dirt okay it makes it more robust and improves um it performances because the other type of mass can be skin uh, on certain surfaces reducing the control of the point so you could look up optical mouse to see how it looks like and um yep it's, it's going to be awesome okay i think i can show you a picture of it so optical optical uh, mouse so you can see what i'm talking about optical mouse let me give you a picture of it so this is a case study of these are modern optical mouse uh, but this is it okay you can see how the optical mouse um is okay so yep okay um uses of a mouse okay use of the mouse and we also have it here as well so use of the mouse almost anything depending on the software but it includes your opening your closing your minimizing you're grouping, you're moving, you're deleting, um, you're doing for imaging, editing, controlling position, and so on and so forth, right? Advantages of a mouse, right? It is a faster method of choosing an option rather than using a keyboard. So it's very fast to just choose an option. Um, it's, very, it's a very quick way to navigate through your application or websites um, as much as possible, right? Does not need a large desk because it's just a small mouse, right? When compared to a keyboard, um, the disadvantage is that it can be difficult for most people who have restricted hands movement um, than using a keyboard for data entry. So people they have that restricted movement. So if you have probably an issue with your hand that you don't have to move around, you're gonna find the mouse very challenging to use. Yes, it's easy to damage, right? And the other types of mouse quickly becomes clocked up with that. Okay, it's difficult to use if there's no um, uh, flat surface. So you have to use it on a on a flat surface okay readily available okay um the next one is the touch pad okay so the touch pad is just kind of like the mouse literally but um it is used it's like i said it's used as a pointy device and it is installed as a hardware on um it's installed as a hardware as a hardware on your um keyboard right on your laptop as a case maybe okay so like i said it's still the same thing like your mouse it is being controlled by the user moving in this case you're moving your fingers around the touchpad you're moving it and then you gently tapping it to stimulate the left button and you can see right here the left button and uh, which is to select double click on it to open and then you rise to actually get something like this so you see that this is right my right this is my right and then this is um, right here you can see i'm not the, the website to type or anything okay so it's the same as the mouse okay now for the advantages it's the same as the mouse to selecting options now but the difference is that the touchpad is integrated into the laptop so there's no need of a separate mouse okay which is actually very cool okay and that means you don't have to rely on any um uh, uh flat surfaces uh surfaces to actually use your mouse but in the case of the disadvantages people with limited still is going to find in any form of hand issues that involves movement find it quite challenging to use it can be difficult to come to control the pointer when compared to 
in the moment. I'm not going to say that. it's true, right? It's difficult to control it, right? It's not it's not easy for everybody except you've been using it for a very, very long time. It's more difficult to use when study operations such as drag and drop. It's easier with a mouse, okay? So you have to put that into consideration. Trackable. Hmm. Trackable. Now this is what we call trackable right here. And even in your car, right? Um now they're similar to a mouse except that there's a ball on the right um either on the top or the side of the device and that is where you have like a kind of where you can control your pointer on the screen okay by rotating the ball so you, you you're not moving the mouse but you're using that to control the pointer right by rotating the ball with your hands it's easier to use for most people with limited hand use. so if you have an issue with your hand rest, fear not you can get a tracker ball so instead of moving your mouse you could use a tracker ball to actually move around okay and it's just like the mouse some tracker ball have two buttons and it's still the same function as your mouse what are the uses okay um can be a good alternative to a mouse for people with conditions such as the rsi it is used in industrial control room environment where it is faster than a mouse to navigate through process screens and luxurious cars to select functions such as the radio, um, telephone, uh, music, sat nav, that does the satellite navigation, and so on. Okay, advantages, right? Does not need um, the same fine control as a mouse, so it's just the same, right? It's easier to use than a mouse, right? If the operation has problem with, like I said, the um, rigs of your hand, it's more accurate because you're using the ball to move on so it's more accurate on the point of the screen than the mouse and it's more robust okay more robust is in, in terms of it can be able to to um um it is not just portable but um it, it can work at, at a more efficient rate okay it needs less deck space than the mouse remember if you're just putting it there and you're moving it as much as possible it's not like you're moving it around which you're going to have to create enough of deck space okay the disadvantages of the other of a tracker port is it is not supplied right with the computer as standard okay so therefore it's more costly so you have to get separately Okay, you need training because it's not a standard equipment, so you need training on that. Okay, now remote control. Now everybody has a remote control, right? In your house, like literally. And maybe I'm just going to add this, but it is a pointing device. So if you did not know that, well, welcome on board. Now you do. Okay, that your remote that you use you probably sit in your. In, 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 your, in your sitting room and you're like crossing your leg and you're selecting the channels now what you do you're pointing right to that um, particular one device so it is used for operation for other device using what we call the infrared signal that's what you use okay the bottom of the keypad I use to select so many options there are so many options on your remote control now what are the users right we have remote control for televisions for satellites and you can use it to alter functions such as sound volume, change channels, etc. etc. Even on DVDs, we still have a remote control. It's used to control what we call a multimedia system, and it is used in industrial applications to remotely control processes such as stop and of course the start machines. Okay, so let's get advantages quickly. It's right here. It can be operated from any reasonable distance unlike for example a wired mouse which is restricted by the length okay some industrial processes are hazardous so it is an advantage disadvantage on the other because the advantage really cool because you could be at a distance to control right those um, um those machines or whatever um, but the advantage is that it is difficult to use if the operator has what we call a limited hand risk or movement okay it is easier to block the signal that is for example the walls in the building are probably very very thick let's talk about the gamepad and the joystick and the driving wheels 
they are all part of it okay they're all part of pointy devices so um in this case um we have the joystick have what we call a similar function to a mouse and tracker board so what you're simply doing is so what in fact what you're doing is um you you're gripping the stick right there you can see right here you're just gripping the stick and the point of the screen can be controlled use it to control and they used to make selections often they have another button at the top of it right um that is used for gaming purposes maybe to fire a weapon or um yeah literally joystick are used for gaming so using gaming for simulations and advantage is that it is easier than a keyboard to navigate the screen so it's easier to navigate the screen when you're playing game right the control is more realistic for some applications than even a mouse yes it's more difficult to control your screen keyboard with other devices such as a mouse so that can be um, a disadvantage because it's difficult unlike the mouse it's easier to just maybe exit or do other things as well driving wheels right it's an example of an input device and it's similar to a joystick in many ways in such a way that it can connect to a computer or a game machine usually to what we call a usb port now this allows you to be able to simulate the turning of a steering wheel okay um we have such as button or pedals which allows you to maybe accelerate and break sensors are used to actually pick up the left and right movement so that the user get that sensation of staying in a car around the circuit or on the road so it's actually like an input because you you whatever you're doing is sending a signal right there to the engine or whatever to every part you know your cars right and uses of driving wheels they can be used for a video game okay especially car racing okay but like they also use for simulations right um yeah we'll talk about the the the, the uh, a driving steering car we see that we can use it right and not just like an actual car, but more or less um, those simulation games that you have a driving wheel. And as you're driving, like you're seeing yourself driving the game as well as possible. Um, advantage of a driving wheel is easier than a keyboard or joystick, okay? Especially when we're talking about console steering movement. The driving experience is nearer to an actual steering wheel. Other controls operate in real life. Hmm. Disadvantage is that it is expensive. Uh, movement on the steering can be too sensitive, giving that unrealistic feel. And of course, unless there is an expensive simulator, feedback to the driving wheel is in non-existent. And then let's talk about um, the touch screen. And the touch screen is an input device. It is, yeah, because a user can choose an option by simply like what I'm doing right here. Okay. Uh, probably I want to select something. I have click this. You can see this is a touch screen. I'm using my hands to select this. I'm using my hands to select this. So it's an input device. By simply touching a button or icon on the screen, the user is automatically made that need of any form of pointing device. So use of touch screen could be self-service deals. For example, petrol stations where user just touch the screen to select a full gauge. Um, automatic teller machines, point of sales. Uh, your mobile phones, computer-based training, there's so many of them. Now, let's look at the advantage. Advantage is that there's a faster entry of options than using keyboard or mouse. Take note of the advantage and disadvantage because most of the time they ask you what's the advantage of using this over this, the advantages and disadvantages of using this over this. Take note of it, okay? It is a um, very easy method for choosing options. It is a user-friendly method, no training necessary because like usually selecting this, right? You don't need any training to do this. Nothing, right? No training for do that, right? Um, it's a user-friendly method, like I said. Uh, it's option to expand the size of the display if necessary. Limited number of options is available using the screen, the touch screen, right? And can lead to a problem of operator has to use um, sensitive frequency, especially if you have your RSI, it's still coming to play. Um, the screen can get very dirty with consistent touching. Uh, you will have to put that in. It's a, it's a disadvantage. Okay. Scanners. Basically, what scanner does is to um, get a hard copy of that information and send it into a computer to get a soft copy of it. That is what the scanner does. Okay. So the app, the 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 hard copy is scanned. 
by what we call a light source and it produces that computer readable image okay now images of text can also be used in what we call the optical character recognition which we're going to see right uh, later also in this chapter that is software to produce what we call editable text okay editable text use of the scanners you can scan documents convert them to a format for using real software package you can scan in old documents okay okay you put it in your originals as well as producing records in case the people copies are lost you can scan photographs you scan in barcodes and the POS time terminals as well uh, advantages image can be stored for editing later use if it uh, when used with the OCL okay it's easier to get in your typing documents again um, it's probably to recover damaged documents and photograph by scanning them disadvantages could be qualities can be limited okay depending on how good a resolution um, a resolution or how capable that scanner is okay so it can be limited depending on how good right uh, they are fairly slow at scanning scanning is a very slow method and you have to bring that really into this um, for digital cameras and um, about I'm going to skip the sensor and then talk about um just a summary of these two camera. We'll talk about these two camera right here. What we are talking about is the fact that um, these two cameras have largely replaced traditional film based cameras. So it's directly within the memory card, right? Connecting that camera to the computer using the USB port, and then you could also use wireless data transfer as well. So you're just capturing images, okay? And um, you're taking photographs, it's used for data capture devices. Um, advantages could be easier to produce better quality photographs, easier to upload photographs, no need to develop films and print out photographs anymore. No need for that. Okay, memory cards can store many thousands of photographs. It has advantage, right? Um, there is a need to know how to use a camera. So yeah, need to be digital literate to use the camera properly. Um, of course, images often need to be compressed to reduce the amount of memory used. For microphone, right, they are that beauty where you're able to it converts your sound, okay, um, into what we call electrical current. That's what it does. So the current produced is converted into what we call a digital format so that computer can process it or store it, okay, as much as possible. So when sound is created, it causes the air to vibrate okay there's a lot of um steps on how the microphone works okay um the diaphragm in the microphone picks up the air vibration it begins to vibrate copper oil it fast forwards and back forward motions the coil signal is either amplified or sent to a recording device use of microphone to impute speech to impute voice um recognition software it can be used as a sensor to pick up sound Okay, it can be used in video conferencing or voice over internet protocol. Um, that's the use. Advantages is that it's faster to read in text than typing in with um, a, uh, a keyboard, right? You could, you could speak to your computer and um, it's easier to type in. It's possible to manipulate sound in real time. And of course, if used in a voice artificial software, it has the advantage of improving safety. Then we have microphones, okay? And it means that sounds can use up a lot of computer memory, okay? And of course, the voice recognition software is not accurate as typing in manually. Okay, light pen, on the other hand, is like a pen, just like a pen right here. And they are used with computers as input device for drawing, okay, selecting objects as much as possible. So let's get the advantage. Greater accuracy than the touch screen. And of course, 
Um, it is small and it's easy to use technology. Um, disadvantages could be problems with lag when drawing on screen. It might not draw properly. Okay, it only works with um, not just no. This is not disadvantage, so don't add this, guys. Okay, because um, back then it was working with CRT, but now it's working with everything. So don't add this. It's not disadvantage. Okay, and not um, not not that accurate when drawing. Okay, not that accurate when drawing is true because it's not like a real thing. But although improvements have been made, okay, so we can see that there's problem with the lag when drawing, especially um, if the pen is malfunctioning. Okay. So to Agile Tech and um, in this video we're going to be looking at um, sensors okay which is in chapter 2 of input and output devices in fact essentially a sensor is part of an input device and we're going to look at it but before we look at sensor there's a need for you for me to go back to chapter 1 now if you have been following me on this series and I pray you've been following me on it <laughs> It's actually exciting. Um, you see, you see in chapter one that we have what we call the analog and digital data, and it's very very important that we look at it. Okay, so I'm just gonna switch back to it a minute, and then we can just look at it. Trust me, it's gonna be very very exciting when we do it. Um, I think I have it somewhere. No, nope, it should be somewhere around here. Okay, now we when we look at the analog and digital data, essentially. What the computer understands is machine language, right? It's right there. If you need an in-depth knowledge of this, um, I would recommend you go to chapter one of um, the textbook. It's right there on my YouTube channel. Um, and then you see how, how I was able to explain the analog and digital, how the converter is being done and um, what, what um, the analog data does in terms of measuring the physical, um, the major physical data, what, how it's been sent to the computer. So if you've, if you need an understanding about, because it's very, very important, it's a, it's a baseline for sensors and you need to understand that. So you just quickly check that on my YouTube channel, probably you can pause this and quickly listen to it. Um, it's one of the, um, um, I, I put them in series, in parts, and you can just quickly just go to it and listen to it, watch it, and then place, then come back to this. And, and trust me, it, it, it will all make sense, okay? Now let's go to the sensors. Now when we look at sensors, we see that sensor deals with what we call, um, apart from we see that analog sensors, but they are invariably they are input devices, right? Because why do I see they are input devices? It is more or less a device that is used to what input data to a computer. Okay, yes, to a computer, and this data is a measurement in some of um, physical quantities, right? And that is um, that continuous changing, okay? That continuous changing. So invariably, your sensors are um, measuring physical um, elements, okay? Like temperatures, um, um, light, essentially, that's what it does, right? And these physical quantities are analog in nature, okay? Now, here is, a, here is a problem because computer now understands what we call machine language, digital. The, there is a need for a kind of a converter, okay? It's too much. Hold on to this. It's all going to make sense. Now, sensors are used in monitoring, right? And... applications now we have various types of sensors right uh, used in application it all depends on what you want to use it for okay and I would highly recommend that you stick to for students you stick to the sensors given in the textbook because literally there are so many sensors literally so many sensors like I said 
There are various types of sensors that are used depending on the application. And we're going to see um, in a minute in a table that's been given to us right in the textbook um, the kind of sensors and what are their use. Take for instance, for example, you are monitoring the data sent to the computer, right? And it's often transferred directly to a spreadsheet package. And you need a kind of sensor to actually do that. But you need to know this, that why sensors are a kind of, um, they're analog sensors, right? Um, they measure physical quantities, which are analog in nature. They're analog in nature. And um, there is a need for that conversion because what the computer understands is binary. And that simply means that you need a converter to convert it from um, the sensor to the computer. And that is done with what we call um, a conversion, what we call an ADC, right? Which is the analog to digital converter, right? And that is simply sending those physical um, data, right, to the computer. And once that has been processed, it is now sent back, right, um, to the user. And that is now done with um, a, um, a digital to analog converter, uh, converter, right? I said it's all going to make sense if you listen um, to um, the analog and digital um, data video. It's all going to make sense. Trust me. Now, let's, let's look at the table briefly. Let's look at the tables um, of the type. <laughs> sensors right here in the textbook. Now we look at temperature. Okay. And what are the applications of temperature, right? The temperature sensor. Now for temperature, you're measuring a kind of temperature, right? You want to see the temperature in the room. You want to see the temperature literally in any, um, in different applications. You want to see it in your automatic washing machine. You want to know if the clothes are dried, or if it's still in the presence of you, you still need to wash it more and more. The machine needs to still go on in making sure that the desk is, is off. You need it in a central heating system where um, uh, where you have uh, the ACs. Is it cool enough? Right? If it's cool enough, the AC should go off. If it's hot enough, then the AC should come in. Is it in an automatic glass house when you have a plant and uh, then you want to know if the temperature is enough so that probably you could add in um, what you add in your plants, water, and you have it. Is it in oven? Is it is 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 the food hot enough? Is the water you are putting? Is it whatever you're doing? You know, is it hot enough to know that that temperature? Once it gets to that temperature, it goes up. The next one is the pressure sensor. Pressure, right? It is used in alarm systems. It's using washing machines. Using robotics. It's using environmental monitoring very very important right um uh, we have light I, I i won't believe everybody can relate to this right everyone can relate to it so it's used for light we can use it in automatic glass house right also there's also um a video on the specimen paper that was done you could go through it there were questions coming out from it for 2023 and probably that will also give you more understanding on that as well okay so it's used in an automatic glass house Right, it's using automatic doors. For example, you you going into um, uh, you want to open your door, the light comes on or something like that. If it's at night, um, um, into the alarm system, somebody comes in, the light pops up and makes that that sound. Um, not it gives that light to show that oh, who is this? Who is coming in? Okay, um, um, the the street lighting control. So when it's when it's night, the street light comes on. When it's daytime, the street light goes off. We have the sound or the acoustic, and it's also used in the that system. When light comes on, it makes that sound, right? So if somebody's coming in that, you know, that sound, you know, that, that alarm sound it makes. And, you know, if it's a false alarm, you can probably um, turn it off manually. And then we have um, the monitoring liquids and power flow in pipe. So, for example, if the, your tank is filled up, then it gives that kind of like a boss sound, right? A boss sound, boss, right? B-U-Z-Z, -Z, right? 
a buzz out to tell you, okay, what are a few done, right? You need to probably turn this off, okay? Um, yeah, very, very important, right? Or if there's a light coming, if there's a light, um, it, 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 it gives you that indicator that, okay, that indication that there's power supply, right? Um, the next one is your humidity and moisture, which is using um, in an automatic glass house to know um, the content um, of the, the sound, um, you, you know this, right? The sound, uh, um, um, uh, the plants as much as possible. Is it moist, right? You check the humidity and um, environmental monitoring, right? All the biology students, right? Probably you're listening to this, makes sense to you. In factories uh, where the moisture levels are crucial, uh, as much as possible, we have the pH, uh, the pH sensor, which is using automatic glass house, um, chemical processes, environmental monitoring as much as possible. Um, let's look at the advantages of using a sensor. Quickly, advantages and disadvantages, we're going to look at it um, right here. Now, when we talk about the advantages, Real quick, when we look at advantages, what we are simply looking at is it is more accurate, right? It is more accurate um, in reading. It's more accurate in um, reading, um, uh, more accurate reading taken when compared to human operators because it's a sensor. Remember, it's more accurate. You're taking um, in real time, right, um, uh, these data. And of course, readings are continuous. Okay, so no breaking in the monitoring. So it's monitoring the situation, it's giving you feedback as much as possible. You're monitoring the gas plant, you're, 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 you're monitoring the temperature. If there's any slight change, it gives you a warning. This is what is happening. Because it is continuous in nature, any necessary actions that the control system or warning will be initiated immediately, right? Because it is continuous. It's not like humans. Humans can monitor for a time, and probably get tired or even you know um, sleep off because you need to rest right but this is a machine here so it's it's measuring all this and it's giving feedback to the system and the system the system is looking at it with the preset information and before you know there is that warning um that initiation process that is taking um, effect immediately okay systems can be automatic automatic in the sense that it removes the need for any form of human intervention. It is very, very important, especially in a, a kind of hazardous, uh, precise control or monitoring, where the sensor is very, very, very important. That's where it comes in, right? Very, very important. Disadvantage, on the other hand, is that 40 sensors can give um, a spurious result. If the sensor are 40, it will give you a, a bad result. It's, it's the same thing. If it's a bad program, you get a bad result, right? So... We can put, we can, we can list them out as a disadvantage, right? For example, sensors on the rear bumper of a car that monitors what obstacle. Now, if this becomes dirty, they might not either identify any obstacle or give a continuous alarm, right? So we're looking at it in the form of car. For example, sensors on cars, right? For example, you, you know, we're probably trying to park, right? You, you see it on the screen that it shows you the distance between what where you should be and um where you need to park the, the proximity and if it's too close it gives you that sign but if it's for any reason it there's a dirt on it on that sensor and it's not able to give you the accurate reading then probably that becomes um that becomes um um uh, very very not so good because then again if there's anything wrong with the sensor if it's faulty without you knowing then um it, it would definitely give you a wrong um reading most sensors are analog Okay, so therefore they require conversions using the EDC. It's a disadvantage because you still need to convert that data to the computer base and back and forth. And there's it. Thank you very much for watching. And please do want to subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's going to be very helpful. We look at people one, we look at people two, we look at people three, we look at literally everything on ICT, IDCC, ICT, to ensure that the Insta is, is yours for the taking. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.
direct data entry devices. When we talk about direct data entry devices, we're talking about devices that are used to input data into a computer without the need for very much and if any human interaction. So they are used to input data into a computer without um, the need of any human interaction. In fact, the, the, use, the human interaction is very, very minimal. Okay, and a good example is your barcodes and etc. Okay, so let's talk about them one after the other. The first one is the card readers. Okay, we have the card readers, and let's start. Let's start with magnetic stripe readers. Now when we talk about the magnetic stripe readers. They are used to read informations on the magnetic stripe found on. Okay, for example, the back. Of a credit card or a debit card okay the stripe contains that useful information such as the account number the sort code expiring date and of course um, the start date okay now this is what we are talking about the magnetic stripe right here and I think I also have that as well so in my card I also have it right here right it's an access bank card I think I have to just <laughs> inside. So you can see this, right? This is the magnetic stripe. So when they swipe it, they can use it to swipe it in, right? They swipe it, um, they swipe it in. So that is what this, the magnetic stripe reader does. It's, it reads information on the magnetic stripe, right? Found on it, okay? For example, on credit cards um, for use at ATMs or even your your electronic phone transfers at point of sale. Talking about um, the machine, okay. Um, for security devices, they are used to allow entries to build in. So it's like a card, right? This is like a card, and they just swipe it in, and that gives them access to their buildings, to their hotel rooms. Okay, that's what the that's what the magnetic stripe is all about. They just read information that are found. The information found on this when it's been when it's been um, swiped. Okay. That's what, it, that's what it does. And now, now we know the users. What are the advantages? Quickly. Now, the advantages is fast entry. Okay? Rather than we type in the information, it reads the information right here. Okay? It's error-free. We will talk about error-free because there is no typing that is involved. Okay? And it's secure. Right? It's secure because the information is not human readable form. You can't read the information here. But the information is here until you swipe it, right? It prevents. It also prevents access to um, restricted areas. Okay, it's not affected by oil, water, or moisture, or any form of moisture, which is actually a good, um, a good advantage. Uh, there are no moving parts. Okay, so um, so it's physical. It's very robust. Okay, very robust means it can be able to um, it's some it's, it can be able to handle right. Not something that can be um. Uh, um, damage easily. Okay. Now, disadvantages on the other hand talks about if the magnetic stripe gets damaged due to exposure to a strong magnetic field, then probably the data is going to be lost. So take note of that, right? Take note of that before probably you do anything with your card. Okay. Then um, it does not work at a distance. So it means that the card has to be in. A form of close contact, right? It has to be in a form of close contact um, with the reader. So you have to actually put the reader right there to swipe it in to actually read it. Now, because the information is not human readable, this can be a disadvantage in some applications as well. Okay. The next one is the contactless debit card readers. When we talk about the contactless debit card readers, they allow customers to pay for items worth up to a certain amount without entering their pins. Now, my card is not a contactless, but it's just like a card, right? It's just like the ATM card, but the difference is that right here, your ATM card, in the opposite direction, you're going to see something like this. I think it's like a Wi-Fi signal. So what happens in the, in the, the EFT and POS, you can... Just put it like this on the machine, 
put it like this. Let's say, for example, this is the machine, right? Okay, I know, right? This is the machine. Let me show you what it is. So let me just show you the machine. So you can look at, you can look at it. Why I imagine so the EFT POS. So you can actually look at it and you see what I'm talking about. So this is the machine we're talking about, right? I want to give you a good example of um, what it is. Okay, so this is a good example of what I'm talking about. Um, we know what it is right now, right? So it allows um, customers to pay item what to a certain amount without even entering their pins, okay? Now, like I said, they have a small chip. This is the chip right here that emits that video wave embedded in them. Now, the card is held within a few centimeters, right? A few centimeters, a few centimeters embedded in them. Now, watch this. Right, let's go back to this. Now, you see what the back card is? Now, notice that it is being placed here. So, you see this? So, it's going to be the, that is if you have that Wi Fi um, on your card, right? When you put it like this, depending on the structure of the card, is right. So, when you put it like this, it's going to read it, etc. 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 So, obviously, it's just like this, but it has um, it's a little bit different um, than this, but still the same. Um, thing okay now the terminal picks up the signal from the chip and allows the transaction to be authorized now what are the steps taken now the customer will look out for the contact next symbol which is this right here on the terminal card the shop assistants will enter the amount of payment okay the card reader informs the customer to present their contact less card the customer holds their card close to the card reader okay they hold it close to it some could be this could be that and the terminal will indicate that the card has been read successfully now what are the advantages of this it is a faster transaction a faster transaction okay the fastest transaction which normally takes up to like 10 seconds um as opposed to probably like 30 seconds using a magnetic stripe reader because the magnetic stripe reader now this is a magnetic stripe reader this right here your atm cards are magnetic stripe readers because of the stripes right there but your cordless card your wi-fi card and your cordless cards okay now the cordless card uses what we call a 128 bit encryption system to protect the card from any form of hacking Customers do not have to worry about typing errors as such as in inaccurately, um, incorrectly typing in a pin. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Retailers no longer have access to customer credit card information on, um, 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 have um, access to customer's credit information or so that, um, show that show him to see if he or he, to see the pin he or she's typing it. Okay. The chip in the contactless credit card responds to payment terminal readers with a unique number used for transaction only. It does not simply transmit the customer account number. This number is also what encrypted. Now let's get this advantage quickly. For this advantage of using the contactless credit card, okay, they are more expensive, okay, than your normal or debit card okay they are more expensive a so when you're going to the bank to purchase the contact list it's quite expensive now a thief with a suitable reader could monitor uh your contact list um card transaction while standing at the counter with you or just behind you okay and also it reduces the risk considerably However, because you don't have to type in a pin. So somebody standing um, behind you could not steal your pin and use it. Okay. So they could actually take your card. So you have to be careful. They can just monitor you um, and then probably get your card, steal your card from you 
And knowing fully well that um, you don't have to type in a pin, so anybody can actually use it. So you have to be careful with it. Now, can take money twice if the customer uses it, it as a cheap and pin card. One is contactless, the other one is cheap and pin. So probably you tried it and now you're using a cheap and pin, it can actually be a disadvantage because probably you can debit it twice. Another disadvantage, like I said earlier on, is transactions are usually limited to a small maximum value. Okay, you could have like $50 in it. Okay? Transactions have been carried out in some countries without cardholders being aware of this, why they're just standing in the payment queue. So that can actually be a disadvantage. Now let's talk about the chip and pin reader. Now, the chip and pin reader are similar to smart cards, but are used at your EFT POS terminals. Okay? Now, this has slots into which the card is placed and the chip is read. And the card is entered using a keypad. Now, you're wondering what's the difference between the chip and pin reader and then the magnetic stripe. Now, like I said, you can use the magnetic stripe, it's still the same difference. The only difference is that for the magnetic stripe, you can actually use it for hotel rooms as well. But the chip and pin is strictly for transactions. Just want to make that clear. Okay. Now, um, the pin is, like I said, the reader also has a small screen which gives instruction to the operator. That's similar to the contactless system, except for two points. They're just similar to the contactless, except for two points. The customer has to key in their pin to make a transaction. This card does not make use of your radio frequency technology. So, this is another example of a chip and pin reader. I know you're getting everything confused. But, don't be. Now, if you've gone to hotel rooms, you see that the card is usually in this form. Okay? And they have something like the way you can swipe in. Now, that's one level. But when it comes to, um, let's go back to the magnetic stripe so you have an understanding of what we're talking about. Now, when you look at the magnetic stripe, right, you are not necessarily putting in a pin. Know that. You are just simply, like my, for example, can also be a magnetic stripe. You just have to swipe in. And when you swipe in, it's going to read your informations. Okay? And transactions can be carried out. So, in the case of credit card card, for credit or debit cards, for use at ATMs, you can just swipe it in and transactions will be carried out. But for the chip and pin, you actually have to slot it in and then type your pin. Okay? Now, another thing is, let's look at the uses and advantages real quick. Where payments are made using cards. We use it. Restaurants, supermarket, travel, agents, etc. But the advantage is it's more secure than contactless. Why? Because pin typed in must match up with the pin stored on chip. It's more robust than the magnetic stripe, in terms of security wise. Okay? In terms of fraud, you need to be careful to ensure pin is not read by somebody else while you're typing it in. Okay? Radio frequency. Okay, so we're going to look at um, the part two of this. I'm going to start with the radio frequency identification. So let's look at the radio frequency identification meter. Now, the RFID 
that's the acronym for it, uses a radio wave to read and then to capture information stored on a tag. Okay, so if there are tags embedded on it, it's going to read it. Now, in some applications, the tags can be read from a distance of several meters. And this is one of the advantages it has over the barcode. Because while the barcode in, in close proximity, the RFID reads it from a far distance. Now, now the, L, the RFID tags is made up of two components essentially. We have the, micro, um, the microchip that stores and processes that information right here. And then we have the antenna on the RFID device that is used to receive and transmit that data and information. Now the tag can be passive or battery powered. Now, concerning the fact that the tax can be passive or battery powered, now let's look at the passive, let's look at the, the, the battery or the active. Now, the passive tag can use what we call a reader video wave energy to relay back information. But the battery uses a small embedded battery to power the RFID. Okay, so this is the tag here. This is the reader. This is the antenna here. The reader, and this is what the computer. Okay, I think I've gone ahead. Now let's look at the uses of the RFID. It can be used in livestock tracking to track the whereabouts of your animals and the farm. It can also be used in retail. It is similar to barcode in such that, but don't, does not require any form of scanning. Now, the details of such as the price can be stored on the tag and can be automatically read at the checkout. Now, the big advantage that it has over the barcode is that several tasks can be read at the same time, right? Thereby speeding up the checkout process. It doesn't do, unlike barcode that you have to do it one at a time. But for the RFID, you can just quickly, right? Just you and do like this, and automatically is going to calculate the total price of every of them, which is which is a little bit which is faster, right, than the back. Room. For admission passing, in some team parks, the RFID cards eliminate the need to swipe or scan before rides. Okay, reducing the wasting um, waiting time. Okay, you can track people in the team parks. And also certain information as well. For libraries, books can be tracked in and out automatically by readers at the library entrance. So, no need to scan um, codes or use a magnetic stripe card, making the process quicker and then more accurate. So, you can just track in and out automatically by the reader. So, let's talk about the advantage. Now, for the advantage, we have no line of sight contact is necessary. So, tasks can be read from it. So, that is a good advantage. And it is a very robust and reliable technology. When we talk about robust, robust technology, let's look at it together so that we, we can have a foot of what it means. Now, it means to describe a software that has several qualities. It means it cannot break down, right? And it, it is not really affected by a single application, okay? So it can hold up well under exceptional circumstances. And that's that robustness, that's what we're talking about, okay? Now, another one is a very fast, a very fa it has a very fast reading rate compared to the barcode. Bi-directional data transfer, which allows to read and write to take place, okay? And bug detection is possible, which is a very key advantage of the, L the LFID. It can detect several tags at the same time.
disadvantage is car collisions. That is when two signals, um, where the signals from two or more tags overlap. There's that possibility. Because I have ID this radio wave, they can be relatively easy to jam or interrupt. Okay? And it's relatively easy to hack, right? By the tags. It's more expensive compared to the barcodes. Now, let's talk about the optical mark recognition. Now, for the optical mark, which is your OMR, uh, either the mark recognition or the mark reader, they used to read marks, right? For, for objectives, for survey, they used to read marks written in pen or pencil on a form. Okay? So, now, usually your objective question paper are being read uh, by this particular word machine. Right? They are being read by this particular machine or objective question. And that's why it has a structure. That's a structure that it has to follow in reading um, this particular word form. Okay? So you're either using a pen, you're either using a pencil, and then the format, right? I have a format here. Sometimes you have to just tick it, um, shade it in the way. And they give you a format in, way, in which you have to shade it. Sometimes you connect a dot. Okay? Now, what are they using? They can be using questionnaires. They can be using multiple choice. They can be using voting papers and many other types. Okay? The advantages is the very fast way of imputing the result of a survey. Because it is fed automatically when there's no user input. Remember, remember, there's a format, and once you tick the format, the machine will automatically read it. So it's the very fast way of imputing the result of survey to the computer. Because there's no tap, there's no typing. There is more, it's more accurate. There's that accuracy than key in the data manually. And of course, it's more accurate than the OCR, which is converting them into the computer. Especially if there's any form of, um, the computer does not see it clearly what the person is writing. Now, it's about it that the form needs to be carefully designed to make sure the marks and shading are positioning, are, are, are positioned correctly. To gather the accurate information. So, if it's not marked correctly or shaded correctly or designed correctly, the um, machine may not actually see it. Hmm. Or probably can read the wrong data. Now, there can be problems. That is, if it's not filled correctly, and I've talked about that. Sometimes they have to be manually checked before they are read. So, which is, both, which is both time consuming and then again expensive. The next one is optical character recognition. Now, this simply means it converts text on hard copy into electronic form. A good example is your passport. Okay? You have your passport that helps you to actually do that. Okay? And this electronic data, into a, it converts this into electronic form that can be used in various applications, such as your word processors or your presentation softwares. Let's talk about the uses. It is used in possession of passport and identity cards. It can convert your hard copy documents into electronic form. It is used in your ANPR, which is automatic number plate recognition. And um, etc. Right? These are the very, very key things it can be used for. And even your historic newspapers and web books can also be archived, right? Prevent damage to the original as well because it's converted to the computer system. Advantages is it is more faster data entry than manually typing all the hard copy document. Then there is no manual data entry with OCR because it's converting it automatically into editable text. Okay, so that, that error is being what reduced. The advantage on the other hand is the system still has difficulty reading some handwritings and it is still not a very accurate technique so we have to also look at that now let's look at comparison between the OMR and the OCR we'll look at just a few of them that stands out now for OCR it converts printed document to an editable electronic format but for the OMR it reads the position of mark so it's ideal for multiple choice exam paper Okay, another one is this method can also read handwriting 
But if the handwriting is poor, then it will cause what we call a reading error. But for the OMR, right, it relies on simply detecting where the marks have been made on paper. Okay? And it's being compared to what the template stored in what? In memory. Um, another thing is why OCR is more accurate than data entered to a computer by keyboard, there are still problems regarding all types of handwriting leading to inaccuracy. OMR is essentially more accurate method for reading data than the OCR. And let's talk about barcodes. Now for barcodes, they are used to read information in the form of barcodes. Now these are the barcodes. This is the barcode reader, this is the barcode scanner. Okay? Now this is the barcode. This is the barcode reader or your scanner. So the barcode, this is where it reads. Now the readers are usually in the form of the readers are usually in the form of barcode scanners and it's often built into the PS terminals in supermarket. Okay? Now we have the handheld. Now we have the hand air scanners or what? Or we have the what? The words. Okay? Now, use of barcodes. They can be used in supermarkets and other shops where goods are marked with the barcodes. And the barcode helps to what? Give that information about products which enable what we call the automatic stock control. If you probably have gone to supermarkets and you've seen um, how the positions of items on the scanner, and we'll just take that. Now, it is also used in libraries to keep track of books on loan. To do that, okay, it can be used as a safety function in many companies to ensure that electrical equipment is checked or what. On a regular basis. Advantages, on the other hand, is much faster than keying in data manually. It's used in a way of recording safety testing of components. It allows for automatic stock control. They are tried and trusted technology. It is. It has been tried. It has been trusted. Unlike the RFID, that is just a new technology. Okay. Now, it's expensive to administer. Not foolproof. It means barcode can be swapped around on items, right? So it means it's not foolproof. Unlike the RFID that can be swapped around, uh, for the barcode is is still right. You have to still bring the items on it, bring the items on it, okay? Um, or put it closely on it. So it's not like you have it; you just swipe around. Uh, it can be more easily damaged than the RFID tags or the magnetic strike okay very important and finally i think this is the last part of it um i think this is really the last part yeah so let's talk about um the qr codes right i think this is the latest technology because every church or every vital information goes the qr code that you just scan and they give you the information now this is made up of a matrix of um, filled in dark squares on the light background. Now, a QR code consists of a block of what small squares. See, block of small squares like this, right? And um, known of known as pixels, and it can hold up to four thousand two nine six characters, almost up to seven thousand eighty nine digits. It also allows internet addresses to be encoded within the QR codes compared to 30 digits which is the maximum for a barcode. Now, another good thing about the barcode is that like I said, it includes a web address on the code. Now, let's look at this. Now, because of modern smartphones and tablets which allow internet access to on the move, barcodes can be scanned anywhere. This gives rise to a number of what uses advertising products, giving automatic access to websites or contact telephone numbers. You can just turn everything to a barcode. 
right? And when they scan it, they have access to that information at real time. So that makes it super, super easy. Mm. It makes it easy. By using built-in cameras, and I do it on my classes as well, right? I just put in the barcode, so once you just scan it in, so it makes it easy to be able to have access to the URL to my class, etc., etc. By using built-in cameras on a mobile telephone or tablet, by downloading the QR app, so you have to download the QR app, you have to use it. So once you download the QR app, what it does is it opens your built-in camera with a smartphone and is able to scan this information and takes you um, to that platform. So how do you do it? You point your camera at the QR code. This will now process the image taken by the camera, converting the square into a different format. Now, you can just do it that way, right? And then you um, ins install the browser, the QR app, and then you can now bring in that picture which is going to read it and then take it to the site or quality telephone. Now they're using advertising, the content links to app, uh, they can be used for Wi-Fi authentication, it can be used to deliver drive um, deliver augmented reality, which we've seen. Um, QR codes can be used to establish virtual online stores. And let's look at the advantage quickly before we call it today. Um, they can hold much more information than the normal barcodes. There are fewer errors than with barcodes that it has the high capacity of the QR codes, which allow that, um, which allow the use of built-in errors um, check checking system, right? So that helps to reduce a form of data redundancy. Okay, now it's easier to read. They don't need expensive lasers or LED. Just download the app, scan it in, convert it to QR codes. It's that simple. And you can trans transmit it either as a text message or even as an image. It is also possible to encrypt your QR code, which gives that greater product, uh, protection than traditional barcodes. Disadvantage could be it's more than one QR format is available, which probably, if you're used to one, you might see another one, and probably you're not really sure. It can also be used to trans transmit malicious code, known as a target, right? So you have to be very careful with it. Know the kind of code, the QR code you are scanning, because it might just transmit the virus, an app, you can just install a link to an app that probably could be malicious, right? That can gain access to all information on your smartphone. looking at um, the output devices and their users. Now, as the name suggests, output. These are devices that usually show the result of a computer processor. Now, it shows it in the numbers of format that can be understood by user. Now, let's look at example. On a monitor or printed on paper, if it's on the monitor, it's seen as a soft copy. If it's printed on paper, it's seen as a hard copy. However, some output devices are part of a control system. Now, in these examples, the computer is controlling the process and sends the signal to this output word devices. Now, so it, it goes beyond your soft copy, hard copies, right? There are some that are part of controlling system that helps to control. A good example is your actuators, right? They helps to control that. Okay. So let's start with the first one. Monitors or screens. So let's look at them. There are two types of monitors. Um, we have the cartridge tubes, which is CRT monitors, and we have the LCDs or your TFT. It means teen film technologies. In fact, they are modern terms for modern teen screens. Okay, your teen screens are seen as your LCDs or your TFT. Let's go down. 
Now, why the CRT monitors have just about been phased out, right? Um, everywhere. You know, there, there were times we had the CRT monitors and, and, and now they're just gone, right? Now, they're included here. And that's the reason why I want to talk about that. You might not actually see them, or if you're privileged to see them, good, right? But we have to talk about them. Because, right? Because they're only the type of devices that can allow the use of light pens. Okay? Consequently, some companies use the CAD, which is computer um, aided design, still use those large CLT monitors to enable the use of light pens as part of their joint environment. Now, they are least expensive types of monitors, okay? Although they are uh, becoming increasingly rare as the LCDs monitors are now taking over um, the computer market. Now, they come in various sizes. They make use of what we call electron guns firing against a, a, a powerful screens. Um, the picture is made up of tiny dots which are color red, green, or blue. Your RGB. And um, the intensity of each color dot make up a vast range of colors interpreted by the eye. Now let's look at the uses of the CRT monitors. They're used in, special, um, in specialist areas such as the computer aided designs um, that have a very um, large to enable diagrams to be created. They're used with light pens, okay, um, to be created on screens. Now let's talk about the advantages. Uh, they can be clearly seen at a wider range of viewing angles than with most um, LCDs. They allow the use of light pens in, for example, the CAD. Okay, disadvantage is that all CRTs are heavy and they present um, a weight hazard if not supported properly. Okay, they also have a large footprint on the decks. Okay, so they can cover 10 times the area of that of the LCD. They are quite heavy. Okay, and because they're heavy, they run very hot and causes and cause fire if left unattended. Okay, they consume considerably power, more power than the LCD. Okay, and it's like AV, everything that is of weight, definitely is going to consume that. They can flicker, that's another thing about them, okay? They can flicker and that can lead to a kind of headache. Uh, although you, you see this more in details in your chapter five, the effect of using IT, okay? Uh, now let's talk about the LCDs and the LEDs. These are major screens right now in play, right? The LED screen is made up of tiny light emitting diodes. So each LED is either green, red, green or blue in color. By varying the electric current such sent to each LED, its brightness to, can be controlled, producing a vast range of colors. Okay, now this type of screen tend to be used for a large outdoor display um, due to the brilliance of the color produced. Okay, recent advances in the LED technology have led to the introduction of the OLED. Okay, talking about um, um, uh, a new advancement of the LED. Okay, now many monitors and television screens are advertised as either a LED um, when in fact they are. Now, one cool thing about the LED is many monitors and television screens are now being advertised as LED um, when in fact they are your LCD screens but they have a backlight. The backlight uses what we call LED. Now, let's talk about the LCD screens, okay? Now, they are made up of what we call the tiny liquid crystals, okay? They make up of um, they make up of an array of pixels which are affected by changes in the applied electric field. How this works is outside the scope of this book, so we're not even going to talk about it as physics, right? Um, and advanced IT, but 
what you need to understand about the LCDs is um, modern LCD screens are backlit, right? Using the LED technology, um, of course, and must not be confused with the pu pure LED screens. When LEDs are used, there's a matrix of a tiny blue-white LEDs is used behind the LCD screens. Okay, now one cool thing about this is you don't have to kill yourself about all the rest. Um, um, of course, before the use of the LED and the LCD screens, um, we use what we call a cold cathode fluorescent lamp, right, as the back lighting method right before it was now changed to lead as the backlighting now the lead reaches their maximum brightness almost immediately so there's no need to warm up before reaching full um, efficiency okay this is a good example of what i'm talking about right you can see the backlight right there with the led of different colors and that makes your that makes the the um the brightness um the contrast of your tv to be of optimal display the LED gives a whiter light, which sharpens the image and makes the color appear more vivid. Um, the LED produces a brighter light, which improves color definition. Screens using LED technology are more thinner than screens using the, C the C um, CFL, right? And if you wonder what they are, I just said it right here. They are the cold cathode fluorescent lamp. LED last almost indefinitely this makes technology more reliable makes for a more consistent product lead consume very little power which means they produce less heat as well as using the less energy now quickly let's talk about the users they use as output devices Which is for more, uh, most modern computers, uh, many LCD screens offer a touch screen input. Um, you can touch on them like this. You know. Mobile phones, tablets, laptops, portable video games all use the LCD screens. Um, Advantage is very efficient, low power consumption, lightweight. Um, unlike the CRT, they don't suffer from screen burning. Um, Screens can be made in large variations of sizes. Do not suffer from a flickery screen, unlike we had in CRT. Um, very sharp image resolutions produce low electromagnetic field compared to the CRT monitors. Okay. Um, disadvantage on the other hand could be color and construct from various viewing angle can be inconsistent, unlike the CRT that. You know, you can actually view from various angles. Motion blur is somewhat a common issue. Okay, um, there's a low construct than um, CRT monitor because it's harder to produce a deep rich level of black. Okay, um, LEDs can have weak or stock pixels, which are permanently on or off. Okay, um, the LCD panels may not be uniformly illuminated by the backlight. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the touch screens. Touch screens, we're looking at it as an output device. Okay. Now, this is one of the few devices that can be used in this way. Okay. When options appear on the screen, for example, a food selection at a fast food outlet, a user can make selection by touching the screen. Now this is input. We've talked about that on input. Another set of options then appears on the screen, such as choosing another drink. This is the output produced based on the previous input. Okay. Now, um, use of the touch screen is acting as both input and output. Okay. So we're looking at it using both as an input and output is your smartphones and tablet. Okay, which allows you to interact with applications. ATMs at bank, where the screen option display uh, display depends on the previous input. Um, ticket collection machines at theater, cinemas, and railway stations. Um, information kiosks at mocks or an art galleries. Okay, so you can actually use the touch screens in these um, platforms. Now, advantages could be 
a faster entry of options using a keyboard or a mouse it's very fast very easy method for choosing options you don't have to get a keyboard to choose it's quite easy it's a user-friendly method it simply means that it's those there's no training involved all you have to do you want to print you click here and then you print you don't have to get a keyboard to scroll your touchpad or to do this no 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 you don't have to do that okay um options to expand the size of display if necessary there's that option to do that however disadvantage is there's a limited number of options available for you to do not very good if large amount of data are being imputed or output being um, output because they are not very accurate and the interface is not fast the screen can get very dirty that has to be part of the thing that comes to mind okay when there's that constant touching okay giving the risk of you know reducing its responsiveness and making it difficult to read in strong sunlight easier for a third party to track user interaction which is a security risk okay credit card details etc etc Understanding on that, okay. Multimedia projectors. I want to believe you guys have seen a projector, right? So, um, the projector receives signals that can be either analog or digital in nature, okay. Now, the, what this simply means is the signal source is usually from a computer, probably from a television, television or a DVD player. Now, the image from the source is then magnified and projected onto a large screen the devices work with a remote control that acts like a cordless mouse so that remote control that's like a cordless mouse when interfacing with the screen now it is possible to direct the computer presentation without being tied to a computer okay now let's talk about the users you can use the projector when you're training making um, presentations on training on various things you can use it for advertising right um, showing your product features, um, home cinemas, the mix of projectors, right? Um, projecting the image from DVDs or televisions. Advantages of multimedia projectors enable many people to see a presentation rather than crowding around a small computer screen. Avoid the need for several network computers, okay, when looking at a video clip or an internet site, okay, so everybody can see what's on the last screen. Right, rather than just logging in and you're networking all the computers. Disadvantage on the other hand is images can be sometimes can be fuzzy sometimes. So you have to adjust it. Right? It can be fuzzy, a little bit blow, it can be fuzzy, so you have to adjust it. But it's, it's a disadvantage if you want to look at it. And projectors are not easy to buy, they're expensive. And setting up a projector can be a little bit difficult. Okay, you have to set it up depending on where you want to place it. Depending on where you want to place it, okay. Um, let's talk about printers. So we have the laser printers, inkjet printers, the dot matrix printer. I'm just going to just compare the three of them, and because um, usually questions they come on um, advantage between one over the other. Uh, but the first, the first thing you need to understand about laser printer is that they can produce a very high quality hard copy output okay um, they are very quick and in producing large numbers of pages okay and they also rely on what we call a large buffer memory where data for the whole document is stored before pages can be printed out okay um, another thing is the use of printers they can be used the laser printers are used where low noise is required if fast high quality high volume print is required then the laser printers are the best options okay printing is fast that's an advantage for the laser printer printing is fast okay in which case they are very little um in which case they are a little faster than the eggjet printers okay they can handle very large print jobs the quality is consistently high okay the toner cartridge they use lasts for a long time okay and yes they are they can be cost 
um, effective okay especially if color options are not required but if color options are required then uh, they are very costly disadvantage is that only really fast if several copies are being made okay if you're printing one one you don't really need but if it's fast copies this is really for printing fast copies color laser printer tend to be expensive too i've talked about this as well um they produce ozone and volatile organic um compounds because of their method of printing the inkjet printers which is more like a home use printer they produce good quality art copies right unlike the laser printers right they don't have large buffer memories therefore printing is done one bit at a time in terms of quality printing your inkjet printers is better than laser printers okay it's better than the uh, laser printers okay um another thing is um printing like i said printing is done one at a time okay that's why printing is sometimes paused the whole print job cannot be stored in the buffer it has to wait for the computer to send in more data okay now um they are based on different technologies the thermal bubble and the piezo electric okay the use of the inkjet printers is that they use they use where low output volumes are required okay they don't print high volumes okay and this is because of the ink cartridge okay it's tend to be what used up very quickly if high printing is required for a single page then these printers id you want a high printing for a single page right a color printing it has a photo quality the inkjet printer is probably your best bet okay um the 3d inkjet printers are now being used in industry to produce prototypes okay we're going to look at that as well okay now advantages of the inkjet the inkjet printers is high quality output cheaper to buy than the laser printers they are home use um they are very lightweight and have a small physical blueprint do not produce the ozone or volatic um, volatile organic compounds disadvantage is that um hmm, it slows output if several copies are needed so it's not um, ideal for printing large copies um cannot do large printing jobs printing can smog if the user is not careful so you, you have to be very careful when you're printing okay it can be expensive if used a lot talking about getting the inkjet cartridge right another one is the dot matrix printer okay where the print head is made up of what um okay it's made up of your matrix of pins right it's pressed against an ink ribbon okay now they tend to be slow noisy and output is not good compared to the inkjet a laser printer you need to know the difference okay they tend to be slow noisy and output is not good compared to the inkjet and laser printer they are still useful however they are multi-pass stationaries all right rules of papers okay that have been used they work well in dirty atmosphere such as factory floors unlike your inkjet or laser printers okay they can be used in a noisy or dirty environment um, where the print quality is not that important um they are using applications where multi-party stationaries or the fact that they can their impact printers is of value still widely used in steel receipts okay okay um they are used in environment where which will not which will be a problem for laser or inkjet printers okay um they can be used in that environment that's they can that for example if it's a dusty or dense environment moist the atmosphere it's fine common copies of multi-part out, uh, outputs can be produced very cheap to run and maintain and again easy to use if continuous stationary stationaries is required this advantage on the other hand is noisy it costs more than the inkjet printers to buy initially it's very slow and it has a poor printing quality
The next one is a plotter, right? Um, it's an actual device. They print on paper. They work very differently to printers. Instead of toners or ink cartridge, plotters use what we call a pen, pencil, or marker to draw multiple lines rather than a series of dots like the printers. Now, the size of the paper can be anything from A4 to 7 meters. <coughs> they can produce what we call the vector graphic drawing and have to use the conjunction with your card or your cam. Now, another thing is, one good use about the plotters is they are used for producing architectural drawings, engineering drawings, drawing animation characters, okay? Now, they have very high um, quality output. They are able to produce high monochrome and color drawing to a high accuracy. Okay, um, able to print on varieties of they can print on a lot of materials. They can print on cardboard, aluminium, plastic, steel, wood. That is a good thing about this printer. Unlike other printers that make it just paper, they can print on anything. Okay, and um, the advantage is that it is slow at printing. It takes time in printing. All right, this is expensive. Okay, equipment to purchase. Okay, um, although the running costs are low once purchase, but it's expensive to purchase, the initial cost. They have a very large fiscal footprint compared to a printer. Now, the next one is the 3D printers. Now, the 3D printers are primarily used in the computer aided design applications. Okay, and um, they are primarily used with the inkjet and laser technology, and they produce solid image that can actually work okay they print they print out prototypes okay and this object is built layer by layer using materials such as a lot of paper ceramic a lot of things to do that um now let's talk about the uses of these 3d printers now the use of the 3d printers is okay just a quick one um, we have different kinds of the 3D printers. We have the direct 3D printers that uses the inkjet technologies. A printhead can move from left to right as in a normal printer. Okay. Um, we have the binder 3D printer, right? Which is two passes for each of the layer. Um, the first pass way drives powder and then, you know, the, uh, you know the rest. Okay. Um, although this is be, um, best explained using a video. Okay, and probably um, for students, I'm just going to drop a copy of a link of the video on the 3D printer so you can see this as it's working in real time. Now, uses is um, for prosthetic limb can be made to fit exactly on the injured body part, um, making items to allow precision reconstructive surgery. Um, in aerospace, manufacturers are looking at making wings and other airplane parts using 3d printers okay the bonus will be lightweight okay position part making parts for items that it's no longer in production right it's very very the 3d printers can actually do that okay and now there are steps on how a 3d, a 3D printers can um, be created right the design is made using the computer aided design software um, the next one is the finalized drawing is imported into some special software that prepares in a format that is understood by the 3D printer. The 3D printer sets up to allow the solid object to be made. The solid um, object is built up layer by layer. Okay. Then, advantages of the 3D printers. Let's talk about it. Um, manufacturers of items have become easier than before. Okay. Um, the 3D printer can manufacture items relatively quickly. Um, even though the cost of the 3D printer is high, it is less when compared to labor cost. Okay. Um, medical benefits are emerging. Prosthetic limb, organs, they can be used for that. Part of machineries are that are no longer built cannot be manufactured using the 3D printers. Okay. Disadvantage is that it, the biggest possible drawback is that is the potential to make a counterfeit item 
that infringes others copyrights now this is a possibility because you can make other items of people's design even when you are not allowed to do that okay all technologies are now in the hands of the wrong people which can be led to a dangerous or illegal activity the treaty can actually produce gone right and this cannot be detected with the um the scans and they can actually use it to harm people now this there's a potential of job losses if this technology takes over some type of manufacturing because now it will be doing the work that um all, um the labor um humans will actually do and thereby um causing a form of unemployment okay um let's talk about speakers why right? speakers are devices to produce sounds okay um of course obviously this is done with the dac that the digital data is first passed to the um dac and then it is changed to electric current then it's passed to the amplifier and then it creates a large enough sound to drive to a last to loud speaker etc etc right now you can see this is the bit the binary back to dac this gives the amplifier and it goes to the speaker now let's talk about the uses of speakers they are using all phones they are built in most computers output sounds for multimedia presentations helps visually impaired people okay especially when you talk about speech generated softwares um, play downloaded sounds files um the next one is the advantages is the sound amplifier speakers can be much louder than the original sound okay which makes it easier for people to listen okay everyone in the conference for example can hear the output from a computer it can create an atmosphere when making a, um, a good atmosphere when you're making a presentation because people can actually hear you from far okay then um they can help visually impel people as a cost right um it's a very simple technology okay speaker output can be disturbing to others especially in an office environment um to get high quality sound the required speaker can be quite expensive right if you're looking for a bass um speakers um speaker can take up a lot of the tech space because you have to buy them and put on your table right um i think the last one is the actuators let's talk about them now actuators is used to control devices now when a computer is used to control devices such as a conveyor belt or a valve it is necessary to use what we call an actuator for example it's a start and stop conveyor belt to open and close the valve now these actuators is a mechanical or a little mechanical device such as a relay or a, a solenoid or a motor okay what it simply means is it helps in movement okay now actuators can be used to control motors pumps switches buzzers etc etc they allow a computer to control physical devices that normally require analog inputs okay now let's talk about the advantage of these actuators they allow remote operations of many devices okay remote operations of many devices for example pump in the nuclear reactor where remote operation is a big safety factor they are relatively inexpensive devices they're not quite expensive it's easier to build up okay now there are disadvantage that there are additional devices in the software that could go wrong especially if you're conveying that device um signal to the actuator that you've built and it's not actually responding because they are usually analog devices computer signals needs to be converted remember these are analog devices right because you're conveying the signals to them to actually carry out an action okay so the computer signals need to be converted using what we call a dac digital analog converter to enable the computer to control these um actuators okay so that's all about output devices we've talked about um um we started with the monitor screens and then from the monitor screens um we talked about the crt the lcds the leds okay and then we moved over to um printers so touch screens we we'll talk about touch screens as the output devices we we'll talk about touch screens as an output devices which is based on the previously input and then we we'll talked about printers which is the inkjet 
the laser jet um then the dot matrix and then we'll talk about the 3d inkjet printers and then we moved over to the plotters right that makes it of either um a pen or um um a pen pencil to actually draw on it right and um and another beauty about the um plotter is um uh or a marker right is that it can draw not just on a4 but it could be used to draw on aluminium cardboard or anything plastic right um steel wood to draw on it okay and uh we talked about the 3d printer which are used to produce solid objects that actually work a prototype whatever you can imagine it produces it and this is done by a software called the computer aided design which is now sent to the 3d printer to get this done and we've looked at the advantages of how it can be applied in so many um industries for the hospitals um um for the medical uh, medical um manufacturings etc etc and then we looked at how to create it and then we looked at its advantages where we talked about um the fact that it could be in the wrong hands and it can use it to produce something dangerous or illegal and we look at um um the drawback is people can actually use it to make um items of things that they don't have authorization for okay and we also look the fact that if it's been applied to other technologies um people might actually lose their job and then we talked about speakers and we said we talked about digital to analog converter where it is now changed to electric current and then we, we um we talked about the uses that it helps to amplify our voices and um we talked about actuators which is more like a mechanical device that helps to um uh, control right so um and then we talked about that it's not expensive to build and as much as possible whenever this is um we talked about disadvantage where we talked about that um we could have issues when it's not responsive what do we mean is simply if the computer is not able to send the signals to it and um most of the time it may not be able to carry out um that action as much as possible okay that means yes this is an insurance software in the system that could go wrong we talked about that so thank you very much and um i'll see you when we're talking about the chapter three okay bye bye